right, what's up everyone? Treadmo talk time. So first off, gotta say, got a lot of love for all of you. You guys are amazing. And I hope you're having a great day. Um, so, wanted to talk about perception and how empowering it can be and how dangerous it can be at the same time. And when we perceive the world, there's several ways we can perceive it. Because we can see a world of unlimiting possibilities. We can see a world that is completely unfair as well and unjust. We can see a world where life is just life and it goes all over the place and there is no rhyme or reason. Regardless of what world you see, you get the choice of seeing it as such. And that's kind of a beautiful thing. It's very empowering. But I want to challenge you all to really think about this scenario. If you were to take an individual and you had them clean toilets and they just didn't want to clean the toilet. So let's say you are the individual and you're cleaning toilets and you feel there's nothing else you can do. You're just a really good toilet cleaner. You would probably hate your job unless you really like cleaning toilets, which I don't know, maybe you do. But for the majority of people, you probably hate your job cleaning those toilets. And you think, why me? Why am I cleaning these toilets? But like I said, perception is your reality. So you can see it in a couple of different ways as well. Maybe you have a five year plan in place. And so for two of those years, you'll be cleaning toilets, but you'll see your end goal. And so you'll perceive that cleaning the toilets is just part of the process and it won't be so bad anymore. Or you can see a world where I'm going to be the best damn toilet cleaner that I can be. And you might even figure out a way that is more efficient in cleaning toilets. You come up with an idea that no one ever thought of and all of a sudden you're making a lot of money. That's a possibility too. But the truth of the matter is our perceptions play a huge role on how we feel about things. It's really, really funny. We sometimes can take life and we act like it owes us something because we did something. We did a good deed and we deserve something for doing said good deed. And most of the times it doesn't work that way. Usually people can get very frustrated. I know I'm talking about this way later, but when YouTube changed some of their systems, some people went up in arms. We are under YouTube's platform, so they can change the system however they want. They've, they've put themselves in the position to be able to do that. So when it happened, I honestly didn't think much of it because I was in the moment of just making YouTube videos. It had nothing to do with well, when I get to this, and then this happens, then I'll get this. Because I know we all know this answer. Life never, ever gives you exactly what you want the way that you want it. Ever. Like, that's a guarantee. If there's any kind of guarantee, that's the one guarantee that we definitely have going. I've never seen anyone write up a blueprint to what they were going to do. Show me the blueprint and say, it's going to happen and it's going to happen exactly in this way and in this order. It might come close, 
but get ready to do some jucking and jiving and figure out how to get to the position that you need to get to because life sometimes will test you. That's the way I put it. I say life is just going to test you. So was the destination you were looking to get to really worth it at the end of the day? Then you got to ask yourself, is my destination worth it at the end of the day? That's what it comes down to. And if it's not, you always have the option to do something different. That's the beauty of it. We have so many options nowadays. And it's funny because sometimes people have this feeling that the more options I have, the better off I'll be. So I say, I need a hundred options. All right, here's a hundred options. No, I need a thousand options. All right, here's a thousand options. Okay, what I really need is 10,000 options. All right, here's 10,000 options. Not realizing, constantly looking for more options doesn't let you see the true potential that you have. We like adversity. It's true, it's in our nature. We want to have a little bit of a fight in life. And why do, how can I prove that? Go watch a movie. Have you ever seen a movie where nothing bad ever happens? How boring would that movie be? It's just like, we're sitting there watching it and he was a straight A student, never had a problem in his life. Everything always went to plan, became a millionaire and then a billionaire. And his life was great. The end. <laughs> Who would like to watch a movie like that? I don't know anyone raising their hand. And saying, wow, that's the best movie ever. We like to see the struggle. And the get through. And the grit. That an individual has. And then they put it together. And make. Their life. Their life. They turn it into something. And then we got to remember the journey is what makes that person the character that they are, though. Like, it's like they went from this to this, and now they're here. And now they're happy because they got to the carrot that they were looking for. And it's not the carrot they're looking for, they got okay with themselves inwardly because you have to be okay with yourself inwardly to be able to deal with the struggles and the letdowns and the failures that are gonna come with getting to any goal. Whenever you're trying to really obtain something that's big, that's worthwhile, you're gonna have struggle. Like that's part of the game. And so I remember reading this book and it talks about an analogy about the three stages that we go through. And it says, the first stage is this is not worth it. Whatever you do, it is not worth it when you are doing it. It just isn't. If it's somewhere you wanna go. If you have someone that you can blame and say, it's their fault I'm not where I'm at, well now you're just playing the victim role and there's nothing I can do about that. Can't help you with that one. But. Whatever you do that is somewhat difficult or extremely difficult, you're going to get the this is not worth it stage. It happens to every one of us. Then you get to that comfortable stage of this is worth it. It is worth what I'm putting my energy into. And that's a comfortable stage for people to live in. Some people want to push it even further and say, I'm not worth this much because you can get there too. If you're willing to put in the legwork to get there, you get to a position to where you're like, I'm not worth this much. Oh, and that's where leverage is created, where everything just comes together a lot easier. I don't know how many of you know, 
I was a very heavy set kid and I had to work my ass off to get in shape. And now people look at me and they don't believe that it was that person. It's so funny, I'll even show pictures. And in their mind, it's still hard for them to comprehend it because they see the new me. And what's so cool about visionaries, visionaries see it before anybody else does. That's where the whole having faith comes into play. They just know it's there. No NF ins, ands, or buts about it. Or, well, maybe, and I don't know what's gonna. No, they just know. They have the vision to see it and seek it out. And when you have that kind of knowing, it doesn't mean you won't go through some frustrations. Because, yes, that is part of the process. You will go through some. In fact, you wouldn't be human if you didn't go through some of those frustrations. The this is not worth it stage always happens. It always happens. And you got to shut that voice up. And just be like, just sit down and ride with me in this. Because not only will that voice be telling you it's not worth it, other people will tell you how not worth it it is. What are you doing? You're crazy. You shouldn't do that. Not like this. Do it this way. I've seen success with this. Your success is your success. You. You're a special individual. You have greatness in you. You want to obtain your success. Go after it. Go after it. Sometimes I, I feel people, they want to be given the permission to go after their own greatness. Right now, here and now, I'm going to give you that permission. Go after it. Not only that, I want you to give yourself permission to go after what you deserve and know what you deserve. Know your worth. Now on the flip side of that, remember this, it is important and crucial to maintain humility because as a human being, we can fail, we can succeed, I'll guarantee you we're going to do both, both happen and I've seen it where people are so used to being successful that one failure they have devastates them. They don't know what to do anymore. They were so used to being successful. They know the feeling of success. They don't know the feeling of failure. Look, we're going through failure and success on a regular basis. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether that individual who's always been successful all of their life and never felt failure, never been humbled by it. That individual, they're standing on a frail base. And so when that base gets knocked over, you get to see them fall apart. But when you stand in a place where people will always you always have a strength for you internally. Build that up. Build that out now. If I could tell anybody anything, because we're always trying to build up our external world. If the world did this for me, if people were nice like this, if people gave me this, you'd be a weakened individual. I kid you not when I say the stars dark, the stars burn brightest in the darkness because it's true you get to show what are you made of and you're made of the situations that you've put yourself into consistently going back to perception every situation you can say every situation can be a growing situation if you allow it to be I was listening to a racing from a trending topic and he was telling about having gratitude have gratitude in life 
And he asked at the end, what are you grateful for? And my answer was, I'm grateful to everything that happens to me. Because everything that happens to me gives me an opportunity to build my character just a little bit more. If I have a moment that breakdown happens, I get to build my character just a little bit more. If I have a moment to tell my parents I love them, I have the opportunity to really appreciate the ones that raised me when I was young. If I have an opportunity to hang out with some of my friends, crack a couple jokes, I have the opportunity. Speaking of friends and cracking jokes, Lobo, we gotta do a collab, because I think we would have a lot of fun with that. I think our two personality types would be very interesting and I think it would be a lot of fun. But anyway, back to the message. You can be grateful for everything that happens in your life. You do get that option. And it's not a weakness, it's a strength at the end of the day. It becomes something that will constantly strengthen you if you allow it to. Because have any of you ever been in a really bad relationship? And in your head you say to yourself, I love that person. And then you're out of the relationship for a little bit and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> you're just kind of like, I don't know what was going on in my head. And sometimes to see the forest, we have to get out of the trees. But if we have a perception of any bad relationship you've ever been in, you're more aware. You learn from it. You learn just because your heart's beating really fast or you're feeling a certain way about a certain person. And it's like, oh, nothing can beat this love. This is what real love is. And then you start realizing, crap, <laughs> this real love really sucks. I think I effed up. But you can't really appreciate the F up till you F up. That's what it comes down to. I know uh, Lily Ma, Lily May, was talking about her struggles as being an entrepreneur. This is a very strong woman. So strong that she was actually able to change the structure of her feet because they said she didn't have dancer's feet. So she was going to prove them wrong and show them, well, I can literally restructure parts of my body to do this thing. And now she's going through a different struggle. And the truth of the matter is, they're all the same struggles at the end of the day. She had a plan, she acted on the plan, she executed, and it became a reality. And that's the way it goes. You have a plan, you execute on the plan, your plan becomes a reality. It doesn't ever become a reality because you had the perfect plan, because the action, the action causes replan. You have to act, but you can't just act the same way every time. You're gonna have to refocus, you have to regroup in life. But she's already proven. She has all the skill sets and the tools. In fact, Evan's backing her on this one. And if I could say I know anyone who knows anything about people, Evan knows about people very, very well. He reads people very, very well. He knows people's strengths and presses on those strengths. But it's not to say our sometimes our strengths can be our biggest weaknesses. I'll tell you, my biggest strength since I've been a little kid, my iron will. I have a will for days. I will just keep hitting my head into something until it breaks. I'll figure it out. But I've had to position myself around the right people as well 
because I will get myself in a bad situation. I know that for a fact. I will wait until the boat is completely sunk, riddled with holes. And like, no, I'm not letting go. I won't let go. And some of my friends, my very close friends, and I specifically picked it this way because they'll say, Cliff, your why hasn't changed. Because that's the truth. Why you do what you do and how you do what you do are two very different things. And so I've learned to kind of compromise and know when it's time to change strategy. Because like I said, you can have the strategy, you can have the plan, but your plans are going to change. They always do. Look at when you were six, and then for any of you that are 30 or even 20, how much have your, has your life changed? And did it turn out exactly the way that you thought it was gonna turn out? It never really does. There's always little changes. But have your morals stayed pretty similar? Have your ethics stayed pretty similar? I would like to think so. I think most people will maintain their structure. And on top of it, you can strengthen your, your structure when you become self-aware enough to realize where you're at. That's another story altogether. But taking the opportunity to realize that everything that you do, how you feel about certain things, how you respond to certain things, is largely placed on your perception of those things. That's why you can take a negative and a positive and always turn it to a positive if you allow yourself to. Whether it be a learning lesson. Even to me, frustration is a form of a positive. I've had moments where I've been frustrated and I say to myself, it's right there. Like, when you've planned and plotted enough, that part is going to happen and it's going to explode. I tell my clients this all the time. As long as you stick to what you need to stick to consistently, even when it shifts a little bit, stick to the necessary actions and watch it blossom. Because you'll get by that, that frustration part is when it's about to just come through. That's when the flower is going to bud. It's going to come through that soil and everything's going to come together. But you got to stick it to it. Because some people get to that frustration part and they think to themselves, it's not working. That's when it's really working. If you put in the time and you put in the work, you got to be honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself on this one because you're going to regret it. If you're putting in half-ass work and you're frustrated, get ready to maintain a lot of frustration. You can't put in half-ass work and expect great results. It's just not going to happen. But if you're putting in 100% effort, you're going all in. That doesn't mean to sprint nonstop. That doesn't mean I can't, I can't take breaks. No. Take the breaks when they're needed. Do the work when it's needed. Live the life that you need to live, but do it intensely. Do it 100% and watch what happens. That's what I'm saying. Watch what happens. And look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself those, like I said, when you ask those tough questions, am I giving enough? Heck, test yourself. Test yourself if you have to. Make it so hard that you know what enough is. Because, like I said, 99% of the people that I work with, they're not given enough. They're not given enough. But I'll tell you this, or anyone's like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> None of them regret it when I show them what they can do. Not a one regrets it. Because I'm going to give you the level that you can take. I'm not going to bulldoze you and just 
Well, you said you can bench 100, so let's see if you can bench 200. That's just, that's asinine and insane. But, all right, you can do 100 pounds. Let's see how many times you can do 55 pounds. I can do it for 20 times. Can you? Let's try again. I can't get past 20. Are you sure? Let's try again. Because we're not leaving here until you give me 22 straight reps. Then they give me 24. That's what I'm talking about. Test your will. Test your soul. Test it. And if you fail, it's okay. Because you're going to be a little bit stronger the next time you go up to that test anyway. And on top of it, you're going to know a little bit more. You're going to be a little bit, be hungry though. Be hungry to learn, to grow, to adjust. Be hungry for that. We're bred for that. That's what we love. That's the, our innate human right to challenge ourselves and to try difficult things and to say, I can do a little bit more. It's funny, because I met another sweet YouTuber and she mentioned her parents were narcissists. Now check this out. This can be kind of funny. An individual can get so strong that one, you can call your parents out on their narcissism in a healthy fashion, of course, because that's difficult to call out. But you're strong and you can be so strong, you can be strong for them too. You can be strong enough to hold yourself accountable and them accountable. I remember a perfect example, me and my dad, I was done. He was pre-diabetic. He had became pre-diabetic and it was my turn to lead him instead of him leading me. He's led me to do all the right things, to educate myself, to always grow, to always think, always mature, always be a little bit better and do it for the sake of doing it. Do it for the enjoyment of doing it. It's not a forced thing. You force things, you're going to give yourself a reason not to do it. But if you just go, go with it. Go with what your nature is. Your nature is to be great in your skills. That's your nature. I guarantee it. If you want to question me on it, try it out for yourself. Go try a bunch of things. Find the things that you love. Find the things that you're passionate about. Go all in on it. Then when you don't want to do it anymore, because you've done it so hard and so long, go even deeper and then tell me. Tell me it wasn't worth it. I've never heard it. Never heard anybody say that. I've always heard, wow, I found a new side of me. The side was always there. You just have to train it. The side is always there. The greatness is always there. It just has to train. You have to train it so you can elicit it out into the world. So, thinking this far, my dad, it's my turn. I started telling him, dad, I'm gonna change your eating habits. We're changing how you do things. We are. Because I am not going to allow you to cheat your own life. I'm not going to do that to you. Because you wouldn't have done that shit to me. You wouldn't. If I was cheating myself or doing stupid crap and I died early because of it, how would you feel about that? And now it's my turn to give you the exact same advice on a flip manner. You got more years in you, and for you to go from pre-diabetic to diabetic, and me just to sit there and be like, oh, well, it's his life, he can choose what he wants. No, there's more to it than that. It is about choice, but when you love someone correctly, you really lay the choices out for them. Because I know most people want to live a little bit longer than if they could. And all they have to do is change a couple simple things. Just a few simple things here and there can actually change your life expectancy. So that's what it comes down to. 
anyway, whew, almost 30 minutes. We're in a little bit longer this one. Keep being great. Keep doing great things. But remember, stay humble. Much love. I hope you all have a great day.